You know, every once in a while you hear from the news that like this bodybuilder, they died suddenly to like this cardiovascular disease or a heart attack. And it happens quite often. Like you can, you know, get these cases at least a few times a year. In this video, I'm going to talk about why do bodybuilders die young? If you're new here, then make sure you click like and subscribe as well. I make videos about just the biohacking, health and the performance. Do it. Like I said, there's been a quite a lot of these bodybuilders or fitness people, physique athletes uh, who just suddenly die to uh, various conditions. Here are a few examples. Aziz Shaversian, he died at the age of 22 in 2011 to a heart attack. Rich Piana died at age 46 in 2017 after collapsing at his home and falling into a coma. Dallas McCarver died at age 26 in 2017 from sudden cardiac arrest. Mariola Sabanovic Suarez died at age 43 in 2019 to a heart attack. Daniel Alexander died at age 30 in 2019 to unknown causes. So what are the main reasons why these people die with so young? Number one, steroid use. Almost all of the bodybuilders you hear about dying were using steroids. It's known that long-term use of anabolic steroids impairs cardiac function, promotes poor lipid profile, raises blood pressure and makes the heart grow in size. Using steroids also enlarges the organs like the heart because it's a muscle. This puts additional stress on the cardiovascular system because the heart has to keep working harder. Having more muscle tissue itself requires more cardiac output. Now there's probably some difference between medical testosterone replacement therapy or actually using these high amounts of anabolic steroids in large quantities, which then just leads to this uh, you know, cardiac uh, dysfunction. <laughs> There are also other compounds bodybuilders use besides steroids, like insulin, growth hormone, diuretics, etc., that can all be equally dangerous if you abuse them. For example, injecting too much insulin can cause severe hypoglycemia and death. It's also quite common for some people to attempt suicide or succeed in using insulin and other diabetic medications. Diuretics that make your body excrete water and appear to look leaner can also lead to severe dehydration and organ failure. Number two, pre-existing conditions. Some people have either bad genetics for heart disease or they have some other pre-existing condition. For example, Aziz Shaversian had an undiagnosed congenital heart defect since his birth. He also had high blood pressure and he died to a heart attack while taking a sauna. Dallas McCarver had atherosclerosis and cardiomegaly when he died from his previous history of dyslipidemia. So your genetics and the past medical history is going to greatly determine how your body reacts to steroids and if you have you know, bad biomarkers or you have to have uh, bad genetics for heart, heart disease or heart failure, then you're increasing your risk of getting those diseases or a sudden heart attack uh, just because of you're at a higher risk already. This is a good thing to remember when you're not taking steroids or doing bodybuilding because otherwise you're just shooting blanks into the dark. Your genetics will greatly determine whether a high saturated fat diet is going to increase your risk of Alzheimer's or heart disease regardless of you're taking steroids or not. So everyone shouldn't have the same diet protocol and everyone should know their genetics. So I think that genetics and uh, the steroids are probably the biggest reasons why these bodybuilders die prematurely. Wait a minute. But this doesn't apply to only bodybuilders. Other athletes like professional wrestlers and football players also have a significantly higher rate of mortality and cardiovascular disease. Probably because of the same reasons. Drugs, genetics and maybe the chronic overtraining at high intensities. I think that the average person, when they hear about another bodybuilder dying, then they immediately, of course, they associate it with steroid use, but they also tend to think that the resistance training and muscle building itself is dangerous to your health. <laughs> that if you build muscle, then you're increasing the risk of getting heart attacks. Bullshit. Now, the problem is that, you know, the bodybuilders, professional bodybuilders and fitness competitors, they tend to take things to the extreme. And, uh, of course, you, you know, most people are never going to reach that. You know, like the average person is never going to build that much muscle. Uh, to reach this dangerous threshold. It's only the steroid use and the drugs and of course the genetics that kind of allow these people to build that much mass in the first place. Having more muscle and strength is actually a very beneficial thing for healthy aging and longevity. It's going to make it easier to lose weight, prevent metabolic syndrome, protect against neurodegeneration and so much more. This becomes increasingly more important the older you get. After the age of 30, aging is characterized by a progressive decrease in skeletal muscle. This process is called sarcopenia, and it can happen at a rate of 3 to 8 percent per decade. From the age of 40, lean tissue and strength get reduced by about 1 percent per year. There's a lot of research suggesting that muscular strength is inversely and independently associated with all cause mortality. A 2016 paper found that, amongst a large cohort of 65 and older, mortality rates were significantly lower in individuals who did regular strength training. Basically, more muscle and strength reduces your chances of dying and can increase your lifespan, especially in older people. Having an excess amount of muscle like professional bodybuilders can be unhealthy because of heart enlargement. 
the additional burden on the cardiovascular system and having to eat such a large amount of food to first build and maintain that mass. At that point you will probably need to take anabolic steroids or some drugs to get there in the first place. So that's why regular people who aren't on drugs shouldn't be afraid of recreational natural bodybuilding and doing some strength training. Another thing that could shorten the lifespans of bodybuilders is excess protein and calorie consumption. It's quite known in at least animal studies and cell studies that eating less protein and specifically less of methionine, the amino acid, can increase lifespan and slow down aging. The increased lifespan seen in methionine restriction is considered to be caused by the down-regulation of anabolic pathways like IGF-1, mTOR and insulin. Overexpression of mTOR and IGF-1 is often related to various cancers. Most of the animal protein like eggs, meat and chicken are high in methionine, which is what bodybuilders eat the majority of time. It might be that the super high protein diet can improve your body composition by promoting muscle growth and helping with weight loss, but at some point it's also going to overburden the kidneys and overstimulate mTOR, which may accelerate aging or promote the development of malignancies. You can't really avoid methionine fully because it's found in basically almost all foods, and uh, if you do kind of restrict it all the time, then you may just you know, start to lose muscle mass, you may develop sarcopenia, and your body's antioxidant defense systems are also weaker because methionine is needed for producing things like glutathione. Awesome, I love protein. It's been found that low protein intake reduces IGF-1 levels and incidence of cancer in 65 and younger, but not older people. However, both high as well as low levels of IGF-1 are associated with cancer mortality in older men. In fact, a meta-analysis of 12 studies with over 14,000 participants found that people with low IGF-1 were at a 1.27 risk of dying than those with higher levels were at a 1.18 risk. Lower levels of IGF-1 may be actually more detrimental as you age, as you'll be more predisposed to muscle loss and bone fractures. So, going on a low-protein diet, it may reduce your IGF-1 levels, but it can also increase your risk of osteoporosis, muscle loss and just frailty. On the other hand, if your IGF-1 levels are too high because of, you know, taking anabolic steroids, injecting IGF-1, or just, you know, eating too much protein, that can also promote the development of some malignancies or some aging. Disappointed! So here are some of the main takeaways of doing some bodybuilding without dying. Keep doing resistance training. Staying physically active and functionally fit is probably one of the best things you can do for anti-aging longevity. You shouldn't be afraid of building muscle either because unless you're taking anabolic steroids, you're never going to build that much mass that it gets dangerous. Get a DNA test. It's highly recommended to take some sort of a genetic test to see what genetic risk factors you have for not only heart disease, but any other comorbidity like cancer or diabetes. The best DNA testing service I know is Self-Decode. They also have a massive database with numerous reports about your test results and different diseases like Alzheimer's, fat loss, etc. You can use the code SEAM for a 10% discount off Self-Decode. Eat sufficient amounts of protein. A higher protein diet is still safe and not unhealthy if you stay metabolically healthy and you're not eating a crazy amount. Research finds there is no additional muscle building benefits to eating above 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. The most you may get is like 1.2 or 1.5 grams per pound, but no need for more. And lastly, do time restricted eating. Intermittent fasting and eating less often is the most effective way to lower IGF-1 and mTOR. It's probably more effective than methionine restriction because instead of stimulating mTOR 5 to 6 times a day, you do it only 2 to 3 times. In conclusion, building muscle and strength training is one of the best things for your health, especially healthy aging. But of course, if you take it to the extreme, then it can certainly be unhealthy and dangerous to you. Unless you're taking steroids, then you probably don't have anything to worry about. And you should still keep, keep yourself physically active and lift weights. If you want to know how to practice intermittent fasting with resistance training while managing your IGF-1 and mTOR levels, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. It's a 13-hour video course with dozens of videos. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.